Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Our Chicago. I'm Terrell Brown. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month, and here's a number you should know. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that more than 130 million adults in the U.S. are living with diabetes or prediabetes. More than 28 million of those who actually have diabetes don't even know it. They haven't been diagnosed. In our second half hour, we'll talk with a doctor from the CDC about its community-based diabetes prevention program. But here now is Dr. Arshia Beg, an internal medicine physician at the University of Chicago Medicine and the associate director of the Chicago Center for Diabetes Translation Research. Doctor, it's really good to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I, I know that this is common knowledge and, and, and well, according to those numbers, maybe not, but I'll let you lay it out for us. The difference between type one, type two and prediabetes, what is that? Sure. So type 1 diabetes is when the pancreas makes little to no insulin. And usually we see this diagnosed in younger um, in children, younger adults, mostly. Type 2 diabetes is actually when your pancreas is making insulin, but your cells are having a hard time using that insulin to bring glucose in. Uh -huh. So you end up having more blood sugar. And then prediabetes? Pre-diabetes is actually, so you don't have a diagnosis of diabetes, but you're at risk for it. So you may have some abnormal levels of blood sugar in your blood, but not to the point where it's a diagnosis of diabetes. Got it. And then let's zero in on, on type 2 diabetes. Who's more likely to deal with that? So we mostly see it in adults, and actually type 2 diabetes makes up about 90% of cases of diabetes in the U.S. So Any, any particular reason why? Well, there are risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes. Some of it comes down to uh, family history. So you have family who have diabetes, you're more likely to have it. Um, there are some other risk factors, so including like if you're not at a healthy weight, um, maybe physical inactivity, uh, those are some other risk factors. When you look at the number of people in Chicago who, who have type 2 diabetes, is that number going up or is it going down? The number of people living with diabetes in Chicago is increasing, oh, wow. and we've increased in the past few years. And, and yeah. do we have any idea why that's happening? Well, there's probably many different reasons. Yeah. Uh, so some of it probably comes down to just the pandemic and people not leaving the house, not being as active. Um, that's one risk factor. Um, we've actually have also seen that maybe COVID infection um, is tipping people over from prediabetes to diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think that folks also weren't necessarily going in to get their routine medical care. Part of it's because we told people not to go to the hospital for many years. <laughs> right. right? And, uh, so maybe not getting the tests, not recognizing that they were at risk and having the ability to make some of those changes in terms of um, nutrition and exercise to nutrition is what I was going to ask you about. I've, I've just personally over the last few years or so started looking at labels a lot more in the grocery store. It seems like sugar is in everything. Does that have anything to do with it? What we're eating? Yes, I think nutrition is really important. And it's not always just the sugary foods that actually increase your risk of diabetes, but you know, not consuming enough healthy fruits and vegetables, mm. uh, um, you need a high fiber diet, lean meats. Uh, so really a healthy diet is what's important. Uh, for, for diabetes, especially type two, uh, if it goes unchecked, unmanaged, undiagnosed, as we heard, there are millions of Americans who, who are undiagnosed right now, what could happen? So there are many complications of diabetes if the blood sugar isn't well controlled. So some of it comes down to um, you can have nerve problems, um, you can have kidney problems. Um, also, uh, you can have eye problems like retinopathy and then also what we call the macrovascular complications like increased risk of stroke and heart disease. Do you think that people are aware of these risks, doctor? Um, like you had started out saying that there are folks who are undiagnosed, so they do not know that they have diabetes. I think that going in and getting checked out, if you have any risk factors, is the most important thing. Talking to your primary care doctor, getting the testing done, having conversations to see even if you're at risk is probably the most important in knowing if you have diabetes or at risk. And that's the last thing I was going to ask you before I let you go. How can we do better with this? What, what can we do? Well, I think um, 
healthy lifestyle is the most important. So yeah. making sure you're getting some regular physical activity, I think it's important to have a healthy diet. And I think also if you have any risk factors, getting uh, screening done is most important. Oh, the solution to everything. Good old diet and exercise. Same old thing over and over again. Uh, Dr. Arshia Baig, really nice to see you. Really nice to talk to you this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And have a good one. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, more on the CDC's community-based type 2 diabetes prevention program. That's on the way. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.